Hello and welcome to The Fight to Fight. And today we are joined by decorated amateur boxer and now Commonwealth Games silver medalist, Gemma Richardson. Welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. I mean, first up, I feel like I've got loads to say congratulations for because, like, there's a list. I mean, number one, happy birthday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 21st. And didn't you, like, guarantee yourself a medal at Commonwealth Games on your 21st? Yeah, a bronze medal on my, like, 21st. Like, I couldn't have got myself a better present, really. That's Not absolutely amazing. I've never done that either on the 21st, so it was just extra special. Oh, tell me about it. I'm guessing you didn't go out that night and celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I was get a nice bath, get in bed and get ready for the next day. <laughs> Just forget about it. Have you celebrated since? Oh, yeah. We had like a big party with all my family and friends. Oh. It was like Coachella theme. So it was called like Gem Cella. And it was all like everyone came dressed up. And it was lots of nice food and stuff. So it was it was so good. Oh, that's so good. And double celebration, because you've got a silver medal. Did you wear your silver medal out for your birthday? It, you it didn't go with the outfit, <laughs> so I couldn't wear it, but it was definitely there, and people were obviously celebrating that as well with me, which was nice. Oh, that's amazing. I've got to say, like, reading up about you and, like, watching your career, like, you weren't really supposed to be at the Commonwealth Games. Like, I mean, this is another thing to say congratulations about. Like, you had a double elbow dislocation, if I'm right. Yeah, like, and yeah. how have you done this? How have you come back early and won a silver medal? Do you know, it was crazy. There was always a joke on GB, like, I was, like, the robust like robust girl. I didn't get, like, I was the girl that never got niggles. I never got injuries. I was just the physio. I didn't really know the physios. I was never in the physio room. Like, yeah. it was just that in GB. Like, I've never had that. Like, even growing up, like, I've only had, like, one injury before this and, like, since oh, I was wow. six. 21 now <laughs> and then in January it was just such a freak accident like if I landed any different or if anything different happened it just wouldn't have happened so yeah. I, but I went the full extreme so I did the double dislocation I tore all my ligaments the capsule everything you could do I, I fully I went the full way wow but how have you managed to come back like I, how did you manage to rehabilitate so quickly what did you do are you magic oh my, <laughs> Like everyone said that to me, like how, and I think it's just, I think obviously I've got youth on my side, which helps. Yeah. My, obviously it doesn't get injured much, which helps, but thanks to GB physio, like I've had the best support and Robbie, he's, and I put a post on Instagram the other day to him and he's just helped me every single, like I've been in physio every single day since wow. January. For months I wasn't allowed to train, so I didn't do anything. I wasn't allowed to, because of how bad the injury was, I wasn't allowed to run. I wasn't allowed to punch with my other arm. So, like, normally you injure one arm. You can yeah. still, run, still do punching with your arm. I had everything written off, so I couldn't run. I couldn't do anything. So, like, four months, I was legit just going to camp, and I was in the physio room, like, every day, two or three times a day. Doing, I was going to the hospital as well. I was getting every bit of rehab, every bit of physio I could possibly do. Yeah. And, like, dipping away, and I was so determined, and I think – the physios was as well because they've never seen an injury like this on GB before so yeah. everybody was so determined and like that's all I had to concentrate on and I'm one of them people like if you tell me I can't do something then I'm going to want to do it more yeah so it's just oh, like, like, <laughs> I'm out, like you're not going to the Commonwealth so I was like no but I'm going to prove that I can do it. <laughs> that drove me more to being like watch me do it and like have the determination to get back and here I am <laughs> Absolutely. So I can't, I didn't know that you couldn't run either and you couldn't even like, so you've managed to get your fitness back so fast as well. Yeah. So like I went, I went, I put so much weight on. So I said, I've, my whole life, I've never had that big of a break off training. Like since I was six, I've always been in the gym like, after a competition. I'd have like a maximum a week off. But yeah. so that happened that like, I didn't expect that either. So I just thought, I'll give it like a couple of weeks. I'll be back running. I'll be back training. I'll be sound. Yeah. And then, we sat down and I was like, you're out for like that long and like you're doing nothing. So I was going to camps and I was just watching everyone. So I put on like a lot of weight. Uh, yeah. I've never been. I was just watching everyone. So like when I got told about the Commonwealth, it was like, right, we haven't got long. We need to, we need to get a move on and like yeah. get everything back. Like I think I started on the bike first. So I like got a bit of fitness on the bike and stuff like that and S&C. Yeah. And then as soon as I found out, like, it was the go-ahead, it was like, 
let's just do go, everything. Go, go, yeah. <laughs> go, go, guns blaze and just get on it and get us fit in as best wow. shape in the time and yeah. Oh, do you know what this, I mean, to me, as like a fan, this just shows you are one to watch. Like if you can do this with everything that you had and with such little preparation. And I was going to ask, like when you have an injury, does it affect anything mentally when you're in the ring? So does it like stop you from really going for it? Yeah, I think when I first started, obviously back like punching a bag or I was very hesitant and it took like a few weeks. So it'd take a couple of weeks to to get the confidence to punch even on the bag. And then obviously yeah. I didn't even start sparring at that point. So then when I first started sparring, it was like technical sparring. It wasn't open sparring. And every time, so I had my arm taped up for extra support every time I sparred. Wow. But obviously in a fight, you can't have that. So out of the whole preparation, I had one spar near the tournament where I didn't have my arm taped. And I remember going into that spar as what? if it was a fight and I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, I ain't got support on my arm. Yeah. It's like it does like mentally, like, mentally tire you and stuff because I was just thinking, oh, my God, like, always in the back. I could have been a fit. I was as fit as I could, could be yeah. in that time. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I can't straighten my arm. Yeah. My arm, every time I snapped, like, every time I snapped it, my arm was hurting. So it was always in the back of my head. But, like, with the physios and the coaches and all that, they put a lot of time with me and, like, they give me, like, the reassurance. And I think out of everyone on the team, I probably got that bit more positive, like, reinforcement in training yeah. and stuff because of, I needed it with, with the arm oh, and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh. So, a lot. And I just thought, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to give it everything. And I was just like, hopefully on the day, the adrenaline will be going and I want to feel it. It'll just take over. Yeah, exactly. Is that what happened when you stepped in the ring? Did, like, all thoughts of it just disappear? Yeah, so, like, in the chain, like in the warm up, like I can feel it a bit. We'd do like the rehab before, like I'd have extra, like a longer time doing like the warm up than I'd normally have with physio and stuff. Yeah. Uh, in the fights, I think as soon as I got in the ring, like the adrenaline took over, so I didn't really feel it until the last fight. Um, it would be after the fights where I'd be like, "Oh, it's stiff," or like when yeah. the adrenaline down, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I've got an elbow injury." Yeah. <laughs> but the last fight, that's when I felt it in the rounds. I was thinking, "Oh." oh god but I was like too far and I was like do you know what it don't even matter like just put it at the back of my head and just carry yeah. on who cares win get a silver <laughs> yeah exactly it's like deal with it later <laughs> yeah I mean you're used to the physio room now anyway so you're just oh yeah I'm, 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 queen now. <laughs> I'm the queen of the injuries me now oh Oh my god, it's amazing though that you've come back now and you're such I mean you're you're such a strong part of that team. In a team, I was gonna ask, so when um in the pro scene, a lot of fighters say that when they're in the ring, they quite like it because they don't have to think about anybody else at all. They they only think about themselves. Yeah. They're just like, okay, this is me, everything is me. But then obviously with you guys, you're a team. And like, does that totally change you in the ring? Are you fighting for you or for them? Or what what goes on? No, do you know what I think as a team we are a very close team and like everyone was fighting we was all there like no matter what like we had like we were shouting for him like we would always watch we're very we was a close-knit team anyway we had obviously like, like we've all trained together for years anyway but going to the like, island together like we became very close and like if anyone was fighting we'd all be there all supporting but it's still like nothing changes like it is a it is um a sport when you're on your own so in that ring you can hear like some of your teammates shout, but it's very much for you. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your family, but it's still very much for you. But outside of that, you want you like it's not just oh I want to win a medal too. I, I want um I wanted Lewis to win a medal. I'd, like when DJ won a gold, like we all yeah care. I want each other to do well. So it's like different. But in the ring, I'm like <laughs> tunnel vision of what I'm doing. Just one person. I only think about number one. Yeah. 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 Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I wanted to ask you about your your journey as well. And actually, you said where you were like, oh, when I fight, I fight for my family. And I love that about your story. That it's, it's a family affair that, you know, you've got your dad, you've got your brother. Can you can you tell us about that and like how how you found boxing or how boxing found you? Or yeah. so, My dad's always been like into sport, like growing up, he did like the kickboxing and that. But he was never dedicated. So we never went far and he never competed in it because he wasn't dedicated enough to commit his time to training and stuff like that. He'd rather be doing other yeah. stuff. So growing up, my dad always wanted, we was into every sport going, like my mum made sure, like swimming, every sport going, Irish dancing, James did oh, football. Wow. <laughs> like every sport going, we tried everything. And um, 
my mum was very big on that like I'm not just sitting at home on my like iPads or phones that like, would be doing something yeah. so that obviously started at all like we was always active and then my dad was like he wants us to do like self-defense and just to keep fit so we started with kickboxing because obviously that's where his like that's what he was doing as a younger child but me and we was just shocking at it like James <laughs> We'd be the two. We'd be two in the class that everyone's had to hold the legs up. We'd have chairs holding our legs up and everything no. like. That. <laughs> we just couldn't come to terms with it. So Dad was like, "This is this is not for you guys." Like we just wasn't. <laughs> so he was like, "Let's try boxing." But at that stage, like I was only six, so um. Oh, you I were was, tiny doing I, like uh, amazing. I was a baby, I was. So <laughs> I just ran around the gym. Yeah. Like, obviously, my mum was at work. I had to go to the gym. Um, my dad was there coaching my brother. Yeah. So I just in everyone's way. I was that annoying little sister to everyone in the gym. Um, picking stuff up, obviously, but yeah. just getting at eight years old when I was like, right, I want you to start now. Just just training, not competing or anything, just training a couple of times a week. So you get your fitness, you learn how to like some defense. Yeah. And at eight years old, I was like, at 10 years old, I was like, I want to compete. I want to, I've watched my brother. I've seen wow. what it's like what everyone like what he's like when he wins and how he feels and the buzz there was with the family and I was like I want to do that I want to be just like him so at 10 years old 10. yeah so at 10 years old I started competing and then I've never wow. looked back everyone just in my, I'm like a big family girl me so everyone in my family just plays a part like obviously my dad's my coach my brother's yeah. the reason like I do it and he's also my coach and I'm like my mum's the reason me and James are probably still in the spot like she's the one that like keeps us grounded keeps us takes us out of the boxing as well like if it, when the training gets hard and when because it does like and I think anyone lies that says like everything's always hard yeah. she was the one be, like reassuring us and like make oh, us absolutely. It all part in it. yeah and that determination as well the discipline in boxing how fit yeah. you can be I mean like there is so much in boxing that is I mean it's hard it's a toll on your body like yeah I can imagine someone tiny as well also working with your dad like I mean that's such a gorgeous relationship and you get so many of these pro boxers as well you know that that have that relationship and is this one of the first like father-daughter relationships with trainers rather than father son I reckon it yeah I think a lot of people are used to obviously like father son and that but no we're yeah father son daughter we are like we're we're like we're strong free ones so so it's it's great to have like, and no one wants better for you than obviously your own family. Yeah. So absolutely. To have him in my corner and to have him like as my coach, and I come on from weekends. I train with them too. Like I've got the best of both worlds, working with GB and then coming home at weekends and still training with with them too, which is great. And I won't change it for anything. Like yeah. we've had our arguments. We have, <laughs> our, <laughs> we have our arguments. We <laughs> we have our like days where it's like just not we're not gelling or like yeah I'll, I'll answer back because I'm still his daughter so I, I'm not afraid to answer back to him oh yeah of course but, <laughs> that's our job right as daughters. But yeah exactly <laughs> but it is great it is oh that's amazing I think that's so special and I think that's that'll be something to see when you grow as well will you keep that when you like I'm guessing you're going to go into pros yeah yeah like, that's... like will you carry on having your dad <laughs> yeah. and your brother there yeah, I think one day obviously I'm going to go pro. That's always like the goal as well towards the end is to go pro. And I'd like to think I'd come back to my dad um, and train with him and be annoying him again like I did all them oh, years. Absolutely. Yeah, you'd be like Joe Calzaghe. I think Devin Haney, he's got his dad there. As well. It's just lovely. I think it's really special because they know you best. Yeah, he'll always be. Yeah. I'll, I can't get rid of him. <laughs> it's there all the time. I get rid of it. <laughs> out of the team. <laughs> Absolutely. What about inspiration? So when you were growing up, I don't know whether, like, did you see many of the female inspirations at that point? Were you the only, oh, I'm guessing you were the only, like, six-year-old in the boxing gym. Were you the only female? <laughs> like, so I was the, yeah, I was the only female in our gym for, for many years. Obviously, when I started, it was still the era of a lot of people didn't think girls should box, so it was very, very new still. So, like, Obviously, I was looking at my dad coached me and he was very welcoming and, and he, he obviously agreed with, like, women in sport and he's always been a big believer yeah. with any sport. Um, where other people, obviously, in, in the circuit or, like, just in general who didn't box, didn't really associate boxing with women and they were still that at that age. Yeah. But I was lucky enough to... Because, obviously, I was young. I didn't see many women boxing. And 
I went like two years without getting a fight where the lads were fighting and at, like at a young age like that I was like why though I don't, I don't I didn't understand it so I was like why am I not competing I'm training the same as the boys yeah. I'm doing what they're doing they're getting fights every weekend I'm not getting any fights and obviously at that age it's hard it's, it's hard to like understand like there's not many girls in the sport never yeah. mind your age your weight um that's when dad started introducing me to Stacey Copeland's so we used to watch her fights and like the TV and I used to like search her up and we'd watch her in like tournaments. And then one day dad got in contact with her and she drove all the way like to no. the came to like my gym, which is like a good like a couple of hours away. She brought wow. a belt and she showed me belts and she did a training session with me. And like just seeing that, like I was like, oh my god, I was like starstruck. I was like, oh my god, holding this bell. And I was like, and she just took me under a wing. So she then took me to Ireland for a training camp wow yeah, she took me yeah she's and like even now like so in the commonwealth she sent me like a little video clip of being like good luck enjoy it don't let the pressure get to you don't let the nerves get to you just enjoy every minute not many people so like, growing up I've always had her as like my inspiration if I've ever needed anything yeah. I'd go to Stacey and I'd love to one day do what she's done for me for like other girls and that's why I'm a big believer is like the other day I went to Tamworth to an all-female training camp to show my hopefully just start opening doors to like other other girls in sports because she was a big one for me and without her like yeah yeah oh what a story and that gave yeah. me shivers that's just so that's just what you want isn't it like to have this like because we are at the beginning but we're at the beginning of I think quite a big movement yeah and so like to have people doing that and taking their time to to welcome others and to help others when they're feeling, you know, maybe a bit ostracised. Yeah. She came, I think, uh, this is before I won any nationals, before I won anything. So I must have been, like, 13 years old and, like, to this day, like, 21, she still messages me, like, with the video messages. And, like, from 13 to 21, I still feel the same way as when I was 13. When I get a message off her, I'm like, that was, <laughs> that, that, and stuff. like, she was a big, like, part of my, like, career and, like, journey That's through sure. And stuff, and she she always will be. I'll always look up to Stacey and want to be like her. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what an inspiration! Yeah. That's that's just incredible. I think that's just so wonderful, and I can't wait for you to do that as well when you've got all your belt. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> yeah, no worries. So, what is next? Are we thinking some? It's the uh, it's, it's the Europeans, and then obviously there's Paris 2024 Olympics. Like, are you gonna wait until your Olympic gold and then go pro? Is that the plan? <laughs> Oh, yeah, so there's the Europeans coming up um, in yeah. October, but we don't know what's happening with them yet. Obviously, like we've got two weeks off now, so I've just been at home, spending time with the family. I was just celebrating my birthday, yeah. giving them a rest. Have a break, yeah, stop, yeah. lie down. <laughs> and then um, we're, in, we're in camp next week, so hopefully we'll get some fight news if, if we're off to the yeah. Europeans. Obviously, everyone wants to go to the Europeans. Uh, if there's any other tournaments lined up, because I think it's important as well, the little tournaments as well to go as many of them as possible to get the experience to get the bouts in um just to get that ring awareness and stuff like you need the more bouts the better like the boxy oh, yeah. but obviously the big goal is always going to be Paris 2024 like yeah. since I was a kid I've had a few like Paris has always been a big one Olympics has always been one Commonwealth has always been one yeah so I've done the Commonwealth now so I need to tick I need to tick an Olympic you tick the boxes you got yeah. to you can't, you can't go pro until it's done. <laughs> yeah, I think because I was younger and that's all I ever wanted, I, I've got to give that a shot. Like, I can't turn pro without that Olympics because I... Yeah. Like, looking back at little Gemma, that's all she wanted was the Olympics. Because yeah. like, there was no pros then for really females. Yeah. So it's definitely the Olympics and then, then turn professional and try and get some little titles. Which would be so exciting. You've been, yeah. if I'm a right by this, like that you've had, you've been in sparring with people like Karis Artisau and Lauren Price, like you've, you've actually sparred them. Like, what's that like? Do you reckon, I don't know if this is a cheeky question or not, but do you think like, yeah, I am as good as the pros, but I want to go and get my Olympic gold first. Do you, or, or is it like you're fighting them when you're sparring them going, actually, no, I need a bit more practice. Or what, what's going through your mind when you've got people like that in your ring? I've spared like a few obviously like pros now like over the years. Um yeah. Harris and Lauren obviously like are two big ones at the minute who are doing like smashing it. Yeah. Um just sharing the ring with them in general is amazing, like sparring with them, like I learned so much from them too and them of which you're gonna with what they've achieved and that like they know yeah. like they know what they're doing. So it's great sparring. I think that's prepared me a lot for 
and brought me on as well in the sport. Um, other people have sparred as well. Like I think if I wanted to, I could turn professional now, yeah. and I'd give it a good go. Like I'd give it yeah. a good go. But I am still young. I ain't got the woman's strength and all that yet. Yeah. So I just want as much experience in the amateurs to take over to the professional side with me to give me the best shot going. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. So I'd, a few more years in the amateurs yet before I turn pro. Absolutely. Give that elbow a little bit of like, you know, give it a couple of years, you know, or have two years. Yeah. Now. <laughs> two years and then I'll be getting there. That'd be ready. Oh, that is so exciting. Honestly, that is incredible. Do you know what? We're going to be watching you. And as a fan, I will be as well. Because, I mean, <laughs> honestly, knowing all the things that you've accomplished in, you know, what, under a year, really, the things that you've gone through and done. and It's been a crazy year. Yeah, it's just been amazing. And I love your story that it's so family orientated and I can't wait for the day when you drive to someone's gym and you go and find a 10 year old and show them all your belts and be like, oh, well done. <laughs> that's so good. And before I let you go, I'm going to have to ask, because it's on Saturday, Usyk or Joshua? <laughs> I've got a back Joshua. I'm England through and through. Obviously, we've trained women at GB, but you've got a back to your own and I'm obviously an English fan, so I've got to go with Joshua. Ah, uh, Joa, well, I, I really want you to be right. <laughs> I, <want> to. <laughs> I was so desperate for you to be right. <laughs> like, you've, got to, you've got to go with your own. And he's, yeah. he's, he's at the end of the day. And yeah, yeah you've got Absolutely. to go with that. I'm hoping for him. Oh, me too. We'll all be there. Pardon? Yeah, I've got to go with Joshua. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you for having me. See you again. Thank you, Gemma. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.